ಇದು ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ ಮೂವ್ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಇದೇನಾ ಇರೋದು ಬೇರೆ ಏನೂ ಇಲ್ವಾ ಹಾಂ ಸರಿ ಒಂದೊಂದು ಸಲ ಅದು ರೆಸ್ಪಾಂಡ್ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಾ ಇದ್ವಿ ಇದಾ ಇದಾ ಹಾಂ ಅದೇ ಓಕೆ ಹಾಂ ಇದು ಬೆಂಚಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ಒಂದು ನಿಮಿಷ ಹಾಂ ಓಕೆ ರೆಡಿ ಹಲೋ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಜುಸ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸಾಫ್ಟ್ವೇರ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರಲ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರಲ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಟ್ರಿವನ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ರ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಯೂನಿಫೈಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆರ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಅವರ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಅಂಟಿಲ್ ನೌ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ರ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಯೂನಿಫೈಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಪಿ ಟು ಡಿಸೈನ್ ದಿ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಓರಿಯೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಎಮ್ ಎಲ್ ಟುಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ topics covered under this session is object oriented design using the eml and software design is the stage where the software engineering process will result in a design or a blueprint for building an executable system will be developed from the design the design and implementation activities are invariably interlinked or interleaved because software design while being undertaken requires some amount of knowledge of programming techniques programming languages that are used etc though uh, this class we are not going to discuss about the object oriented programming and uh, object oriented uh, principles because that is uh, beyond the scope of uh, this class however we are going to discuss about how to make design from the software engineering models that we have built for the solution and we try to identify software components and their relationships based on the customers requirement between the process of requirement and design we have done the modeling now this modeling is used to build a blueprint for constructing or implementing the solution implementation is the process of realizing the design as a program that is why when we come to implementation or in the previous step of design we must have some idea about which programming environment the system is going to be built which programming language is going to be used and some amount of this information or this knowledge is required once we decide upon the uh, model and the design we will go further to see whether to buy the uh, parts are to build the entire system now with object oriented analysis and design advantage is many of the parts are componentized or components are available off the shelf so if those components are already available perhaps there is no need for building them again we can as it is buy it it may become cheaper 
and uh, as we have already seen component technology makes the quality also better and it is immediately available as a commodity. So, that we can buy it from vendors and integrate it into our system. One example is like for example, spell checker as a component if it is available we do not have to build it we can buy it and integrate that into our system. So, like uh, another example is if we want to implement a medical record system we can buy a package that is already used in hospital and uh, if it is only partial solution we can integrate that with the other systems which we are going to build which may be customization for the specific hospital. It can be cheaper and faster to use this approach rather than developing a system from scratch in a conventional manner. When we develop an application in this way desi design process becomes concerned with how to use the configuration features of that system to deliver the system requirements. Configuration features means what components are available, how to interface that with the system that we are going to build or the system that we are going to build we have to build interfaces. So, that it is able to be integrated with the components available of the shelf which we are going to buy etcetera. So, in this case we may have to take into account the first job is to identify which components we are going to build, which components we are going to buy and then go further about integrating the components or the parts. In any case we have to identify the components that are required for building the solution. This identifying components is one of the very important aspects of software design. We will see further how we are going to do it. There are several ways of doing design in software. Some of them is hood that is hierarchical object oriented design, other one is object oriented system design, the third one is object oriented system analysis they are all part of the design process, object oriented analysis and objectary like factory we have a library of objects or components which we can use as and when we want those things and when we are building the object or when we are building the components or when we are building the parts we will take care that it can be reused. This is one of the major advantages of object oriented uh, design and analysis because we can identify the commonality or the common functionalities across much of the domain and then make them into ready made components or ready made objects and keep them in our library and whenever we want we can integrate that with any of the applications that we are going to build. Other one is on the fly we can create the objects as a factory and then we can integrate that with the system. Now, the hierarchical all of them are basically hierarchical only, but basically hierarchical means we identify the most general object and then from there we identify the sub objects or sub components. So, that from top to bottom we go on designing all the components or identifying the components and then designing those components. So, basically it scores well on object oriented properties encourages modeling of objects explicitly, objects are modeled in a hierarchical manner, a strong emphasis on the object interface specifications and encapsulation etcetera. These are all uh, the advantages of hierarchical basically we go from identifying the objects at the highest level and then identifying the components and their interfaces relationships etcetera and finally, we build the data specification and associated inheritance, uh, but it receives less attention we work at the higher level that is the idea. One of the object oriented design process or the general object oriented design process is 
as we have already seen building the models which are actually the first model we discussed about was the context model and then once the context model we are able to identify build a use case system for it and design the system architecture identify the principal system objects and then design model specify the object interfaces this will more or less complete our object oriented design process the process is illustrated here using a design for a wilderness weather station now the example given and the process it is shown simultaneously so that we understand the model and then the use case diagrams the application of uh, uml and then we have to remember in all the cases we will be using or generally uh, organizations will be using rational unified process or rapid application development we have already seen this uh, 4 plus 1 view model that is the analyst and designers they will look at it in the logical view and then programmers look at it from the implementation point of view and then system integrators will look from the process view and system engineering is actually deployment view where system topology delivery installation communication those aspects will be taken care and the system will be viewed from that point of view what is the operating system what environment where this system is going to be sitting all those things are deployment view and implementation is programming view logical view is actually the end users uh, point of uh, uh, functionality and uh, which is actually uh, implement uh, which is actually uh, implemented uh, after analysis and designing designing and system integrators they actually combine all the components and put together and see uh, how actually they work while uh, running as well as in the static mode that is basically the view taking this into view and also uml we build first uml model and then we build the object structure simultaneously we build the source code for it and then once these two things are ready we build the executing program which is actually a runtime so abstract view object structures which will help us identify the object or procure the object and after that from the abstract view we build the source code in any language and compile it and then the runtime system is built this is basically the design model and how actually the implementation or the coding is done we will see now the system context and interactions understanding the relationships between the software that is being designed and its external environment is essential for designing and deciding how to provide the required system functionality and how to structure the system to communicate with its environment we have seen this in the context model in the case of weather uh, system the context model is actually we will see as we go further basically we need a reporting system a communication system a data collection system and then a control system so understanding of the context also lets us establish the boundaries of the system setting the system boundaries helps us decide what features are implemented in the system being designed and what features are in other associated systems like for example whether we have to provide raw data to the other system which will format it and then display it in proper way or we have to take care of even processing the raw data and then displaying it in the proper format 
these are actually the boundaries of the system, where the, the boundary is because collection of parameters is one factor that is one boundary you can say that is one box, processing is another box, controlling the equipments and instruments is another box, communication is another box. Like for example, once we attach this to the communication system which may be taken care further by the satellite, the satellite may not be part of our scope our scope may be only to collect parameters from the instruments and control those instruments and then integrate those data and make it into a nice report type of thing and then transmit this report to the satellite or transfer this report to the satellite. So, that further it can be broadcast to all the people or whoever is subscribing to the uh, satellite uh, uh, news weather system etcetera. So, we have to define establish the boundaries of the system these are some examples and the interaction models we have already seen the control and then uh, the uh, report model communication model etcetera and there is interaction among these models because it helps us to modularize the system. So, that for each model we can define the boundary and then subsequently when the models are models need to be integrated then the interfaces that are required between the models have to be identified and built into the system. A system context model is a structural model that demonstrates the other systems in the environment of the system being developed. So, an environment may have several subsystems, all those subsystems are being developed simultaneously and these subsystems need to interact with each other and those interaction models also we have to be or the designer have to be aware and accordingly he has to design the system. An interaction model is a dynamic model that shows how the system interacts with its environment as it is used, not only with its environment, but also with the other components within the system. This interaction also will take place. Once we integrate all these things and see from a high level view, this is called as the architectural design. So, that means as we view uh, a, a building uh, from outside, uh, it looks uh, you know uh, very nice, so, but only thing is we are not going into the details from outside we are seeing it looks a big building huge multi storied building or, uh, or factory or something like that. So, uh, very similar to that is the architectural design once interactions between the system and its environment have been understood, we use this information for designing the system architecture system architecture is a high level view of the system. We identify the major components that make up the system and their interactions and then may organize the components using an architectural pattern such as a layered or client server model. These things we are going to discuss in the design patterns or something like that when we have time tomorrow. The weather system is composed of independent subsystems for that matter any system is composed of independent subsystem that communicate by broadcasting messages on a common infrastructure. So, we will see now the architecture of the weather system. The object model is a general view of program structure shared by UML and object oriented programming languages like Java and C++. That is why I said generally a designer must be having an idea of a programming language whether Java, C++ or Python or something like that. And computation takes place in objects because objects are having the attributes as well as the procedures or the methods. These methods will result in the performance of computation and these attributes or the properties can store data and implement the behavior through the computation or through the 
method they are linked together in a network each object communicates with the other object through messaging or whatever is the technique communicate by sending messages or described by classes classes is actually the structure of the object as it looks uh, during compile time let us say so approaches to object identification is use a grammatical approach based on a natural language description of the system used in hood overd method we have seen what is hood overd method earlier that is hierarchical object oriented design and this is grammatical approach is identifying the verbs so that we know what are the processes that are there identifying the entities so that we know who are the users based on the identification on tangible things in the application domain tangible things means whatever is relevant for the application domain there we have to identify who are the actors or who are the entities and what are the processes or what are the operations that are required and then these entities may be both actors as well as properties or attributes basically nouns are considered as actors or processes and verbs are considered as in a general sense processes or operations or methods use a behavioral approach and identify objects based on what participates in what behavior basically all the objects may not be required all the time so at any point of time what objects are required what objects communicate with what other objects which we can find out from sequence model or sequence diagram so a behavioral approach will identify the objects and what participates at what point of time use a scenario based analysis this is another way of looking at things that means like a storyboarding what happens if a customer logs in then what happens the login program starts then what happens it accepts the login username then what happens it checks with the back end whether the username is available is it feasible method or the system has to accept both user id and password at the same time instead of making two calls to the back end application all these things are basically scenario based analysis what if the objects attributes and methods in each scenario are identified and it helps us to map the behavioral approach or understand the behavioral approach as well as identifying what objects are required at what point of time this will be helped or this will be possible by having the sequence model or the sequence diagram and the interaction diagram and these are all parts of our software models by this we identify the objects that are required examples are subsystem models that show logical groupings of objects into coherent subsystems and sequence models that show the sequence of object interaction coherent subsystem means we have not discussed about the uh, coupling and coherence we, anyway that's uh, uh, basically uh, what objects are common what functions are common and what objects are having common uh, process and what objects are having common area of operation so that these objects can be grouped together logical grouping and they can be made to be invoked at the same time so that the functionality and the runtime process becomes more efficient that is the idea the sequence model that show the sequence of object interaction once we know that an object is no longer required then we can remove that object or if a set of objects is no longer required because of the dependency we can remove those sets of objects which makes garbage garbage clearance very easy so that the system is having efficient usage of the memory which is one of the 
most important aspects of uh, programming language that is unnecessary memory is being held because the objects are occupying it, but those objects are no longer needed. It state machine models that show how individual objects change their state in response to events, this will help us to uh, know or identify what events may happen. Like for example, if in the weather case, if an event or a temperature or the speed of wind, is it going beyond some range? then is it required that some alarm should be given or it is within the range. These are all events or it has changed whether it is constant. We can even say this in a simple thing where if an object moves in front of a camera, then only camera captures it. Otherwise, the camera will not capture the uh, picture or the uh, event that is going on. So, that it helps us to reduce the consumption of memory and also uh, non-important events we do not have to worry about or non nothing happening we do not have to worry about only when an event happens we have to take care of that. Basically, these are the ideas. Other models include use case models, aggregation models we have seen what is aggregation basically a class is aggregated uh, with subclasses. So, that an object is having sub objects or other objects uh, aggregation of objects, generalization models etcetera, where generalization is used for inheritance etcetera in programming language. We will be able to understand these things by the models and while designing. Subsystem models show how the design is organized into logically related groups of objects. This is the continuation of the previous discussion what we said that subsystems will help us in organizing logically related groups of objects. In the UML, these are shown using packages An encapsulation construct. This is a logical model. The actual organization of objects in the system may be different. Means, the idea is the logical model that means a group of objects are shown as a single object but when we implement it, the implementation may be different, the implementation view may be different, but from the point of view of analysis and design and also end user point of view, this may be a single object. We will come to the design model now. Design models show the objects and object classes and relationships between these entities. Please remember that we are going all these we are doing all these things step by step. First, we have built the context model, then the architectural model, then identify the objects, then identify sub objects, then identify the interaction, then identify the um, uh, design models, which is actually the objects, object classes and relationships between these entities. Static models and dynamic models describe the static structure of the system and the dynamic interactions between the objects during runtime and the static view of the system uh, in terms of object classes and their relationships. Examples of design models are subsystem models that show logical groupings of objects into coherent systems etcetera. Now, Sequence models show the sequence of object interactions that take place. Sequence models are part of our behavioral model, whereby we will be able to identify the relevance of objects or objects arranged horizontally across the top and then they are communicating with each other or the coherence of objects that is required, so that objects are able to communicate with each other. Time is represented vertically, we have seen that in the earlier modeling, models are read top to bottom. Interactions are represented by labeled arrows, different styles of arrow represent different types of interaction. A thin rectangle in an object lifeline represents the time when the object is the controlling object in the system. This is sequence model, now we will come to 
weather information system. We will take initially the requirements completely. The requirements are generally said as a national weather service wishes to collect weather information from remote areas to help with weather forecasting, forecast accuracy assessment and climate change modeling. This is actually the uh, task that we have, but the requirement is to build a weather information system. Currently, limited collections are made manually by people visiting remote stations every day. This is the present situation. One of the requirements for building the uh, are proceeding into the context, but the thing is this is expensive and time consuming. Some areas have no coverage because of difficulties of access, no road, heavy snowfall etcetera or for example, if we want to predict tsunami, we may have to find out the weather conditions uh, inside the or uh, uh, far away from the shore, uh, so that uh, uh, it can be predicted uh, in advance. But in those places, it is uh, already it is difficulty because the weather has already changed, uh, but it is moving towards the shore and also uh, it is difficult to reach there. So, in those cases, uh, weather information systems uh, will help, so that uh, unmanned uh, stations can be put there, which will be able to uh, detect the wind speed, temperature um, etcetera, those parameters and then able to convey this information to the people on the shore or broadcast it to the uh, general population, so that people can take care of uh, uh, the uh, themselves about the tsunami etcetera. The intention therefore, is to develop remote automatic collection systems that are connected to a broader weather information system, that is the idea. So, how we will go about it, we will see. The other uh, requirements are, because it is remote and because it is uh, unmanned, it must be self contained and completely autonomous. That means, we have to take care of what about the power supplies, power generation, satellite communication ruggedized to tolerate extreme weather means it is um, it is made into a um, uh, ruggedized uh, 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 environment means uh, packaged uh, so that uh, it will withstand the weather variations etcetera or if there is uh, any physical uh, shock etcetera it will be able to take care of that and it should be having self testing because it is remote and it is unmanned they should be always self testing if there is any problem it should be conveyed to the uh, uh, to the controller who is who may be sitting uh, at a distant place so that it can be controlled from a remote place whether it is manual or automatic so these are actually some of the non functional requirements may exist in several versions for different types of deployment like highland areas based on wind power that means, uh, uh, mountains or something like that, desert areas based on solar power. So, the power can be used if it is uh, mountain or something like that, wind power can be used. If it is desert area, then solar power can be used. So, these are different types of deployment. Remote control to support autonomous operation as uh, we have already seen because of the autonomous operation, self testing and uh, it conveys the state of the system, so that if there is any action to be required or taken, it can be taken from a remote place through remote control. Dynamic software reconfiguration, this is also required. Nowadays, we are seeing that uh, if uh, there is any upgradation of the software, it automatically takes place. For example, operating system upgradation or something like that, it automatically takes place in our PCs. In a similar way, we have to build our software, so that dynamically reconfiguration of the system can be made. Dynamically means suppose for example, if one item fails like uh, uh, one uh, let us say uh, thermometer or a temperature sensor or a wind uh, power sensor, it fails or something like that. If there is a backup available, it should be able to be implemented or brought into the system at the same time 
the software should automatically be capable of reconfiguring or reconfiguring locally or reconfiguring through remote control or what is known as automatically detecting failures and uh, uh, it should take over or fail over in, into the good system things like that fault control basically. So, we will come to the final requirements collect weather information from instruments at regular intervals transmit this information on the request to the weather information system over satellite link. It can be either on the request or periodically. Periodically is also actually the request is taking place automatically. Let us say every 5 minutes or every 10 minutes or every half an hour whatever it is it can be set and when the time period elapses automatically the information is transmitted store information if communications are not available this is also one of the important aspects if communication link is not available then it should be capable of storing information so that when the communication link is restored it can be sent that means the system has to keep track of times at what at what times what was the uh, condition of the weather this table it has to maintain and then it has to convey it to the uh, satellite. Monitor external conditions and shut down power generation instruments if threat of damage from extreme weather. This is another thing if there is a damage or if there is a threat of damage then it should shut down automatically by itself instead of running if there is power may create a fire hazard or something like that instead of that it can shut down automatically if power generation or there is some problem. Run regular diagnostic tests self test we have seen earlier. So, that regular diagnostic tests to assess overall health of the system. We will see how actually it is going to be implemented. We have have uh, we do have a small use case here it is a first level let us say. So, this is weather information system is one of the actors and control system is other actor and weather information system it reports the weather and reports the status report the weather condition which has been taken uh, by the controlling system and which has been taken by the uh, instruments and then report status if there is any problem with the system itself test or something like that any failure all those things are reported these two are the use cases for weather information system. For the control system it has to restart, shut down, reconfigure, power save and remote control these are the use cases for the control system. So, we have identified more or less what are the functionalities that are required. So, these are the processes and we have identified what are the actors that are required. The actors are here weather information system and weather information system may be having some of the attributes that are the fields that are required for conveying the weather information and some of the operations that is reporting the weather and reporting the status. These parameters or attributes will be actually sent as part of report to the uh, satellite system. These attributes will be updated and the value of these attributes will be reported through report weather operation or method to the satellite or the receiver. Similarly, in control system, control system is the program or is the entity or is the use case or sorry is the um, actor and it is having the following process or methods restart is a method shutdown is a method or the function or operation reconfigure and power save and remote control. So, we already have identified two objects with their properties as well as the operations or methods. One of the examples in the tabular forum is report weather, weather information system and weather station are the actors the weather station sends a summary of the weather that has been collected from the instruments in the collection period 
to the weather information system, the data sent are the maximum, minimum and average ground and air temperatures. These are actually the properties or the attributes maximum temperature, minimum temperature, average temperature and air temperature. The maximum, minimum and average air pressure, they are the properties or attributes which are sent through a method which is actually a send method or transmit method could be and other, th other properties are average wind speeds, total rainfall etcetera, they are all the data. These data are the properties or attributes and the process of sending is actually the process or operation or method. The weather information system establishes a satellite communication link with the weather station and requests transmission of the data. So, this request is the word which is actually a method and the summarized data is sent to the weather information system. It could be summarized or it could be the raw data as the case may be or as the design may be or as the requirement may be. As we have already said, if it is boundary is uh, the raw data is processed by the other end, then the boundary is only raw data. If the summarized data is required or the processed data is required, then the boundary will go beyond collecting only raw data, but also processing and summarizing it. Comments are weather stations are usually asked to report once per hour as I have already said either by request or periodically it can be, but this frequency may differ from one station to another that is basically the configuration or the remote control and may be modified in the future that is the. So, a context model is shown here where the weather stations are WS 1, WS 2 etcetera are shown as weather stations which are actually having uh, anemometer, uh, wind speed measurement, barometer, thermometers uh, etcetera and then in the middle is the weather information system and we have satellite information and uh, weather radar information and weather data archive. Data archive is required because if there is communication failure, it has to send data from the archive. So, a small data archive is also required. This is basically the context model and we will see another way of context model is the satellite, the weather station, the control system and the weather information system, where weather information system communicates with the designated satellite. So, it is one to one relationship, but there may be multiple weather stations communicating with the weather information system. So, it may be one to many etcetera. This is a context model and subsequently the architecture of data collection system is whether data is transmitter and receiver, whether data receives the raw data from the um, equipments or measuring uh, things or control system and it transmits to the satellite system. So, basically the data collection is we have already identified a class which is having weather data as the property and transmitter and transmit and receive as the methods or the operations. Now, this is the uh, weather station architecture in a somewhat more detail. We have the interface data collection and instruments where the interface manages all external communications and subsystems manage collect and summarizes weather data of uh, data collection and subsystem in, uh, instruments which is actually a package of instruments for raw data collections. So, high level architecture of the weather station is uh, we have fault manager because we have already shown self test. So, if there is any fault that is to be managed or information to be sent and corrective action to be taken or wait for the corrective action like uh, for example, if there is a uh, power uh, disaster then the system has to shut down we have seen that configuration manager. So, that from the remote uh, location the system can be configured or reconfigured. Power manager, so that we have seen for highlands the power is from the windmill, for desert the power can be from the solar and uh, also uh, 
if there is a power failure, battery backup has to take place or battery charging etcetera all those things. Communication link is the main uh, link between all these components and data collection is one of the important uh, aspects of the uh, control uh, program or control manager. Instruments are a uh, subsystems to which all the sensors are connected like uh, whether uh, uh, temperature sensor or speed sensor etcetera and then communications is actually the interface to the communication link whether it is to satellite or whether it is from the instruments to the data collection system or the weather uh, monitoring system. So, this is basically a high level architecture, but understand all these things are not very uh, perfect in the very first instance. The idea of iteration which we have used in rational unified process is a continuous process in object oriented or in our hood process. Basically, through iterations the design is more and more uh, accurate and, but we have to start somewhere. We start with identifying components, identifying operations etcetera and then whenever new design, because design is a continuous operation and design is an intellectual operation and design is also uh, uh, somewhat evolves over a period of time, because so many things may not May, we may not be able to or the designer may not be visualized, but as the system gets developed as design gets evolved. So, many other uh, activities are may be identified other requirements may be identified. So, it is a continuous process and then iterative process which is actually the precursor to the agile methodology. Now, we will see what are the object classes ground thermometer and anemometer, barometer etcetera these are all the instruments we have seen. Weather station the basic interface of the weather station to its environment it therefore, reflects the interactions identified in the use case model and weather data itself encapsulates the summarized data from the instruments. So, at the first level we have identified some object classes and uh, the classes are represented like a weather station, weather data and uh, ground thermometer the nanometer, barometer etcetera. So, we have come a long way from the requirement through analysis into the class models, identification of the objects, high level architecture. So, many things we have already arrived and we have also identified how an object may look like with the properties like collect is a, is a method, summarize is a method under weather data and then under weather station report uh, weather is, is a method calibrate is a method and uh, 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 startup is a method and shutdown is a method. So, we have already identified the use cases, the actors, the operations etcetera and we have seen the sequence model how it works. Further objects and object refinements are use domain knowledge to identify more objects and operations. Domain knowledge how do we acquire with weather experts the software designer will have a discussion and then he acquires the domain knowledge and then he foresees what are all the other objects that may be required and then bring them into the design. Weather stations should have a unique identifier. If there are multiple weather stations, we must have a unique identifier that is one of the things that comes from the domain knowledge. Weather stations are remotely situated. So, instrument failures have to be reported automatically. Therefore, attributes and operations for self checking are required. This is also true in process control operations and uh, programmable logic controllers. All these uh, equipments are having some amount of intelligence within it. Uh, so, if anything any uh, damage or any malfunction occurs immediately it is reported uh, back to the uh, system. So, that uh, re remote uh, operations are possible to be corrected through remote operations they can be corrected or reconfigured. So, active or passive objects basically uh, the uh, whether the objects are having any methods or whether they are having only attributes. In this case objects are passive and collect data on request rather than autonomously. This introduces flexibility at the expense of controller processing time. Type of objects we have to recognize 
and uh, these are the subsystems of weather station. They are communication controller, uh, weather station and uh, weather data instrument system and then uh, uh, on the down is uh, the uh, instruments actually uh, are sensors, uh, air thermometer, anemometer, barometer etcetera they are shown. So, we have uh, come a long way in the design, now we are ready to uh, go further. We will see the sequence of data collection whereby we identify what objects communicate with what other objects at any given point of time. Like for example, the weather information system request report through satellite communication and then the satellite communication it gives a request to the weather station about the report weather and then which is acknowledged by weather station at the same time it gets the summary from the communication link and then the summary uh, weather data is collected and then it uh, finally, it comes as a replay to the weather information system. So, this is the sequence diagram of uh, weather uh, system. So, subsequently uh, state charts are the uh, uh, are the one which are which show how objects respond to different service requests and the state transitions triggered by these requests. If object state is shut down then it responds to a startup message. If object is shut down then it responds to a startup message. If the waiting state of the object is waiting for further messages. If report weather then system moves to summarizing state. If calibrate they are all operations or methods the system moves to a calibrating state or we can say they are all commands. Report weather is a command for example, calibrate is a command they are all methods which these commands will invoke the methods. A collecting state is entered when a clock signal is received. This is automatically periodically um, collecting the information and then collecting the data and then uh, communicating this data depending on what is the configuration. The state diagram is shown here. This is the shutdown which will respond only when a restart signal is coming and then uh, finally, uh, the uh, when the system is running the uh, remote control will uh, uh, configure reconfigure the system and the report station uh, uh, will uh, test it and then uh, after the test results are transmitted back and then if there is a report uh, request for reporting the weather then uh, the it is summarized and then it is transmitted. So, uh, uh, to it uh, periodically collects uh, data from the uh, collection uh, sensors or uh, instruments uh, uh, when the clock signal arrives periodically. So, these are object interface specifications. Object interfaces have to be specified so that the objects and other components can be designed in parallel. So, that the all the interfaces means basically the uh, communication or the operations that take place between two objects all of them can be put into a one package. So, this is shown as uh, the operations like for example, interface weather station what are the interfaces weather station startup startup instrument shutdown shutdown instrument report weather test test instrument calibrate this is actually shown as the interface. Uh, of uh, uh, weather station uh, for uh, using uh, let us say uh, Java programming language. So, an interface is built which actually has all the methods that are required for weather station. So, design evolution is hiding information inside objects means that changes made to an object do not affect other objects in an unpredictable way. Assume pollution monitoring facilities are to be added to weather station these sample the air and compute the amount of different pollutants in the atmosphere. Pollution readings are transmitted with weather data. Actually, pollution monitoring can be a sub object or sub class or we can inherit uh, the uh, class uh, from the existing class and then made it into uh, another object, but which will not uh, affect the uh, design of the original system but uh, which can be introduced into the system uh, without any uh, uh, without any uh, problem or without any uh, discontinuity and that is the advantage of 
design evolution and object oriented uh, design. That means, any modifications can be done without much of a disturbance to the existing system. So, uh, other use cases are all uh, here, but uh, we are not going to discuss uh, uh, those things, because we have already seen the use case and then the actors and the description etcetera. And uh, uh, finally, uh, today we have discussed uh, uh, about uh, the design aspect of uh, the system. After modeling, how are we going to design it? What are the steps? Identify the requirement, identify the use cases, identify the objects, identify the high level architecture, then identify the interaction and then uh, build a design model and then build an interaction model and then identify the interface between the objects and uh, finally, a blueprint of the design is built, which can be mapped to a programming language like uh, what we have shown here in this case. So, this completes today's class. Thank you.